Hello, we are going to take up the Lamb to the Slaughter worksheet that you all worked on. Um, hopefully this will clarify any questions and will give you an idea as to what I am expecting when you answer these types of questions. Let's go. So I have put all of the answers in red. Describe Mary Maloney at the beginning of the story. What kind of wife does she appear to be? So Mary appears to be a very happy wife who wants everything to be perfect for when her husband Patrick arrives home from work. And there is also mention of Mary's being pregnant. I am going to go ahead and pause this for a second. Okay, I'm back. I just wanted to be able to have the story open so I can show you where I'm finding these answers. Um, so we look at the first little bit here. This is why she wants everything perfect. The room is warm, clean, the curtains drawn, the two table lamps alight. Um, she, already, she already has her his whiskey poured with some ice cubes ready to go. Um, she keeps glancing up anxiously at the clock because she knows her husband should be home anytime now. Number two, how is her behavior different by the end of the story? Well, I would say she's no longer a happy wife as she has killed her husband at this point in time. She does, however, still seem happy for some twisted reason. Maybe the thought of getting Patrick out of her life, even though she seemed happy, or the fact that she doesn't have to worry about Patrick being with another woman or whatever the case may be. So, um, so she does still seem happy or maybe a little bit insane as she now has the realization that her husband is gone and she is still with child. How can you tell that Patrick Maloney is preoccupied? Well, Patrick seems preoccupied when he gets home from work because he takes his drink down in one swig and pours himself another stronger whiskey. A lot of his answers are very short with Mary as he tries to cater to her husband. Um, mm, 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 mm. So you can see like through this portion, it's all fairly normal. Um, just trying to find right here is where things start to get a little awry yes he said I'm tired and as he spoke he did an unusual thing so unusual being out of the ordinary so this is where Patrick starts to act a little out of the ordinary he lifted his glass and drained it in one swallow although there was still half of it or at least half of it left. So Mary doesn't see this, but she can hear the ice cubes clinking on the bottom of the glass when he tilts the glass back down. Um, and then he, yeah, he pours himself another stronger whiskey. She does notice this and that the dark amber color, that it's not diluted with club soda or soda water. So what news does Patrick have for Mary? So Patrick has the news for Mary that he is leaving her. Although it does not directly say this, it is heavily implied by Zell as Patrick tells Mary that she will be looked after in terms of money and not to fuss about anything because it wouldn't be good for his job. So, um, she keeps trying to get him to eat up here. Um, finally, down around line 65 or so he says sit down just for a minute sit down and then he re reiterates this go on he said sit down so I've got something to tell you this is where what is it darling what's the matter he had now become absolutely motionless um, here and he told her that's it Right here, that's all we get about what he said to her. And he told her. We got all this foreshadowing here. This is going to be a bit of a shock to you, I'm afraid. But I thought about it a good deal and so forth. You know, that's a bit of foreshadowing. It's something bad. He's going to tell her something bad. But we don't get what is actually said to her. So it doesn't take long, four or five minutes at most. And she sat very still through it all, watching him with a kind of dazed horror as he went further and further away from her with each word. So there it is, he added. 
and this is where he says, you know, you don't need to be making a fuss, and it would be good for my job. Bad time to be telling you because she is pregnant. Um, I'll give you money and see you are looked after. So these are all, we can kind of deduce from this that he is leaving her. Um, what clues does the writer give about Mary as she hears this news? Well, after the news that Patrick is leaving Mary, she's in an almost dreamlike state. It occurred to her that perhaps he hadn't even spoken that she herself had imagined the whole thing. So you can see I have some quotation marks here. This was a direct quote from the book. Her first instinct was to not believe any of it, to reject it all. It occurred to her that perhaps he hadn't even spoken, that she herself had imagined the whole thing. Maybe if she went about her business as she acted as though she hadn't been listening, then later, when she sort of woke up again, she might find none of it had ever happened. So she's trying to, she's detaching herself from reality here as she is spiraling a little bit into madness. Um, the author also describes her. Um, Uh, so I think we, she has heard the news, however, and it comes as such a shock to her that she pretends like she has not heard the news. So why does Mary go ahead and make supper after all? So Mary pretends like she just has not listened to the last four or five minutes of news from Patrick that he is leaving her. Instead, she tells him that she will go and get supper ready. And as she leaves the living room, her feet feel as light as feathers as she floats across the living room and out to the freezer. There is no mention of her not feeling anything. Oh, there is also mention of her not feeling anything, but a bit of nausea, saying that she doesn't really feel anything at all. So she is in a state of shock. Uh, what is Mary's first concern as she builds her alibi? So Mary's first concern as she builds her alibi is that of her unborn child. She is concerned for the baby. Also being the wife of a detective, she knows how important it is to have a solid alibi and what goes into a murder investigation. Um, so after, this is where the, the kind of like the turning point, for God's sake, he said, hearing her out, but not turning around, don't make supper for me, I'm going out. At that point, she simply walks up behind him without any pause. She swung the big frozen leg lamb high in the air and brought it down as hard as she could on the back of his head. And then, uh, right here, all right, she told herself, so I've killed him. It was extraordinary. Now, how clear her mind had become all of a sudden. She began thinking very fast as the wife of a detective. She knew quite well what the penalty would be. That was fine. It made no difference to her. In fact, it would be a relief. But on the other hand, what about the child? What were the laws about murderers with unborn children? Did they kill? them both mother and child or did they wait until the 10th month what did they do so this is where she's thinking about building her alibi and she's thinking about her unborn child okay how does the author use elements of surprise foreshadowing and irony in the story one of the main elements of surprise is when mary is unwrapping the leg of lamb and patrick yells at her that he's going out and to quit making supper and she just casually walks over and smashes him over the head with the frozen leg of lamb the next line so I've killed him the title itself leads to a bit of foreshadowing as we have the idea that something bad might happen with slaughter in the title uh, and irony is presents presents itself throughout many aspects of the story we'll discuss that when we look at the chart um, so the jigsaw the correct order of this jigsaw is down here in red Five, two, four, one, seven, eight, nine, three, six. Most of you got this either all correct or pretty close to correct. Um, what I did to come up with this is I just scanned through the story and you know, put everything in the right order. So that's um, what you got to do. Next, we're going to look at... Um, Here's the irony. So we did this one together as a class on Teams, the situational irony for the first one. So the second one's a little bit blurry. Eh? Sorry about that. Mary hits her husband over the head with a leg of lamb. This is an example of situational irony because you don't expect someone to commit murder with their dinner. 
The author describes how much Mary loves Patrick and how she enjoys taking care of him. Um, this is like in the beginning of the story and then after she hears the news that he's going to leave her and she becomes in this dreamlike state and then she smashes him over the head. So it's kind of like, what? Did that just happen? Uh, the next one, Mary seems totally normal and happy to the store clerk, but her husband is lying dead at home. So we have two types of irony here. We have dramatic irony and verbal irony. The reader knows Patrick is dead, but the store clerk does not. She murdered her husband, but acts normal. She lies. Um, the policemen assume a burglar entered the home and killed Patrick with a large wrench. This is dramatic irony. Police think a burglar killed Patrick, but we know it was Mary. Mary says it'd be a favor to me if you eat it up. She's referring to the leg lamp that she used to kill her husband with. So we've got dramatic and verbal irony here. So in dramatic irony, the reader knows this is the wep murder weapon. In verbal irony, she's lying. Needs the murder weapon gone. So uh, the police officer says, probably right under our very noses. What do you think, Jack? Referring to the weapon while eating the lamb. So dramatic because... It is literally under their noses. It's they're eating it, and verbal irony, because the officer is using a metaphor. So last thing we're going to look at is the Venn diagram for the Hitchcock movie versus the actual story. Some similarities, differences. You guys did very well on this. Um, if you have the short story on the left hand side, similarities in the middle and the movie on the right hand side. So in the short story, she went to the basement for me. In the movie, Mary goes to the garage for me. So just some differences like that. Um, the short story, she pours the drink and he pours the drink in the movie. So she makes a big deal about the lamb in the oven. Um, Oh, she talked more about, you get more information about the fact that she is pregnant in this, um, in the movie. It's a lot more dramatic. Um, she gets ready for the grocery store in the short story, but here uh, in the movie, fills containers with sweets. She stages a crime scene. There's more like, put into the crime scene, more into her alibi. So when she gets home from the store, it looks like the apartment's trashed or their house or whatever. Um, so there's a lot more goes into the investigation. They're like drilling her on the couch while she's sitting there. Um, they're asking her a lot of questions. Way more than they ask in the, in the actual like short story. Um, she brushes her hair, more explanation of investigation, calls friend Molly to cancel plans. This doesn't happen in the short story. Um, we also get more about why Patrick is leaving her. She tells her, he tells her why he's leaving her. He wants to marry someone else or someone else. So. You know, this adds quite a bit because we don't get this. This is only implied in the, sh in the short story, but this is like right out there in a Hitchcock movie. So why he chose to do that, I don't know. But um, so we've got about a minute left before my video timer goes off. So some similarities. Well, both Marys in the movie and the short story go to the grocery store after the murder. Patrick wants to leave. Um, the police eat the murder weapon. That's obviously that would have to happen. She giggles at the end, so, you know, it's either a giggle of relief or a giggle of insanity. The frozen leg of lamb is the murder weapon. She creates an alibi. She's pregnant. She hits him in the head, so some obvious similarities there. Anyways, we're just about out of time. I hope this clarifies all of your questions for taking up lamb to the slaughter. And for those of you who did the opinion paragraph, I will do a follow-up video for that as well. Thank you.